Hi, I'm Adrian Martinez with 3D Guru, and this is the Hypercube 300. Let's build it. In my last build video, I showed you how to build the frame for the build plate. It was a great piece to start with as an introduction for how to use 2020 extrusions, corner brackets, uh, the T-nuts, and the screws and everything to hold everything together and kind of build everything. That prepared us to do something more complicated, and that's what we're going to be taking on today. For today's build, you're going to need all the extrusions for the frame itself. And that means four 600 millimeter extrusions and 10 440 millimeter extrusions. You're going to need a bag of 200 hammer nuts or T nuts. You're going to need a bag of 150 M5x8 screws and a bag of the 2020 corner brackets. We're also going to use our 3D printed Hypercube 300 assembly tool, two clamps, a straight three millimeter hex driver and a three millimeter ball end driver. The ball end driver allows you to approach the screws at an angle and makes it easier to put certain parts of the printer together. To get started, we're gonna need a 600 millimeter extrusion and a 440 millimeter extrusion. Place the 600 millimeter extrusion into the jig like so, so it's pressed firmly against the back wall and place a clamp on it. Then take your 440 millimeter extrusion and place it in the jig, pushing it over so it's pressed firmly against the first extrusion. This beam will form the top beam of your printer. Then we're going to take a corner bracket with M5 by 8 millimeter screws and T nuts installed and place it right in the corner. Let's clear this clamp out of the way and because these are longer pieces than on the print frame or the print bed, uh, we're going to tighten these up a little bit more just to make sure that they hold everything securely. Now we're going to remove the clamp, carefully take this out of the jig, okay, and the 600 millimeter extrusion being the vertical part this is the top of your printer. We're going to now place the next beam down by placing it back into the jig and pressing it firmly in place and grabbing another 440 millimeter extrusion, placing it in here and pushing it firmly against the other extrusion. So we're going to place a clamp here in the middle to hold everything in place. We're going to make sure everything's pressed firmly in and we're going to put another clamp here. Now this is one of the things that's really nice about this tool, uh, the, the jig tool. Uh, when I first assembled my printer, I set the distance between these beams with a caliper. This is actually much more precise and it's going to ensure that this is perfectly parallel and the spacing at each end at the top and the bottom are going to be exactly right. So uh, it's a massive, massive time saver. So we're going to grab another corner bracket, place it in the corner. We'll remove the clamp and carefully push the jig off. And now what we're going to do is repeat the process on the other side. We are going to first um, rotate it in this orientation to make sure that we have the 600 millimeter extrusion firmly pushed in place and then the 400 millimeter extrusion gets pushed across the side like so. Place a clamp on here. Place the other clamp here. Now I know some of you are going to be tempted to cheat and actually turn this thing this way, uh, the way that we were just using it, but you want to make sure that your printer is as precise as possible. And in order to do that, it's important to push this 600 millimeter extrusion against the back wall, just like we did with the first one. 
and then push the 400 millimeter extrusion up against it tightly. And it's easiest to do with the tool in this orientation. Again, make sure everything's pressed together nice and tight. And then grab a corner bracket and install the corner bracket here. And then we're going to rotate the tool 90 degrees and do exactly what we did on the other side and install the corner bracket here. Next, we're going to carefully push the jig off. We're going to turn it 90 degrees and push it back in place to make sure that it holds all the pieces in the proper orientation. We're going to put a clamp back on here. Make sure it's pushed down firmly. And put another clamp here. And then we're going to install the T-nut in the corner, or the corner bracket. We're going to install the corner bracket right there. Let's remove the clamp. And then carefully push the jig off of the extrusions. We're checking the flatness and this is built nice and flat. Before we go any further, we want to take a second and then reinforce this a little bit more. To complete this side, you're going to need to put extrusions in this corner and this corner also. Now we're going to use the tool in another orientation to set the spacing of the bottom beams or the beam that goes across this area. Grab a 440 millimeter extrusion and pop it right in place here. And for this one, we're actually going to take the tool, flip it upside down, and just push it up this way, like so. All right. And you just need to make sure that the bracket or that the extrusion is pushed right up against the corner here. And I'm going to put a corner bracket right in here. And we're going to repeat the process on the other side here. And finally, once all pieces are in place, put it on a flat surface and go around tapping the corners to make sure it's flat. And this is perfectly flat. Once you've done this, you can take this part, set it aside, and build another one just like it. I've got to tell you, this thing really is a game changer. The first time I put one of these frames together, I spent at least eight hours of careful measuring uh, taking it apart, putting it back together, flexing it, doing all kinds of things to make sure it was perfectly straight. I think I've put both sides of these together in less than 30 minutes. And, I mean, that is huge, if I do say so myself. Okay, the next thing we got to do is put the vertical pieces that are going to come off of one of these sides, and then we're going to put the two sides together. All right. To do the next step, we're going to place this into the jig, sorry, like so. Make sure that the whole assembly is again pressed firmly against the, the vertical wall here. And we're going to take a extrusion and place it in like so. Once you've done this, you're going to get a clamp and clamp one here like this and you're going to get another clamp and clamp it in like so. All right, so we have the side clamped to the jig and we have one of the uh, 440 millimeter 20, 20 extrusions going up vertically. Now we're going to take one of our corner brackets and we have to put it in two planes now. We're going to put one here. We're also going to put one here. And that's going to rigidly hold the component in place. All right. Now that we've got the corner bracket in place, you can see that we've got three aluminum brackets holding this corner together. It's going to make it extremely rigid. And that rigidity 
is going to be a big part of why your prints are going to look so great when this thing is done. So we've got one corner done. We're going to rotate around the other side and repeat the same process. Again, check visually that the nuts are square and in place and they're looking good. We can now remove the clamp. We're going to move to the other side of the printer and we're going to place the vertical pieces that go from here. Now, to do these, what we're going to do is we're going to turn the printer on its side and we're going to assemble them just like we did for the sides by pushing this tool, sorry, pushing this tool in from the top, taking a 2020 extrusion and placing it against the tool here and here to ensure that it's aligned. And as you can see, it's perfectly aligned with the other piece because we use the same tool to place this one. Now we're going to flip the whole assembly around again. And we're going to place the piece that goes here. Just like so. So we have more than half of the printer put together now. The last bit is going to be done by repeating a process that we just did. And it's going to be a little different. So we're going to place the printer upside down, like so. We're going to place the other side like so. And just like we assembled it before, we're going to make sure that the 600 millimeter extrusions are placed in here and touch against the back wall. And the 400 millimeter extrusions put through here and are very firmly pushed against the vertical part. So first thing we're going to do is make sure that the 600 millimeter extrusion is pushed hard against the jig and pushed all the way down. And we're going to put a clamp here. And then we're going to make sure that the 440 millimeter extrusion is pushed firmly against this piece or this extrusion here, and we're going to put a clamp there. Like that. Let me spin this around so you can see it a little bit better. Right here is where we're going to put the uh, corner bracket. And we're going to place another corner bracket right here. And that's going to make sure that the entire printer stays square. Okay. Now we can remove the jig. And that corner is done. We're going to repeat the process over here. Again, the vertical extrusion is going to get placed in the jig so it goes against... The vertical extrusion is going to get placed in the jig so it goes against the back wall here. Like so. And the 440 millimeter extrusion is going to push against it. I'm going to push it over, make sure it's nice and snug. Put your clamp in place. Again, make sure everything's aligned and everything's pushed into the jig as much as possible. So at this point, we've placed all the corner brackets and pieces that we need for the actual top of the frame. We're going to rotate the frame onto its side, and we'll make the last two connections here and here 
to make sure the alignment of everything is correct. Again, take your tool, place it so that it's in this orientation pushing against the very bottom of the leg. Okay. And that's going to ensure that everything's held nice and straight. Okay, I'm looking at this again and in order to get this mounted properly, this surface has to be against a flat surface because I noticed that it was moving this way. So I'm going to rotate the printer like so. This piece is already secured, so this is aligned. Now the vertical part and this new horizontal part that we need to attach are now both flat against the surface and will be aligned. So we're going to take this, we're going to push it in like so and then we're going to push this extrusion over and we'll place the first corner bracket here to lock it in place. There we go, that's much better. You always want to take time to kind of think about how you're going to put things together so that the surface you're working on and the tools you're using help you to make everything as naturally aligned as possible. And just a second ago, I noticed that I was putting something together in a way where I wasn't really using kind of everything that was available to me as my, uh, you know, for my benefit. So by rotating at 90 degrees and taking this part that was loose and moving this way firmly against the flat surface, and then against this in order to make sure that the dimension was correct in this, in this axis, uh, I was using every tool available to me, my build surface, and my jig to make sure that the part was going to be aligned and straight. Okay, we're going to place this right here in the corner. That's my wife walking by in pajamas. I'm going to leave that in, baby. <laughs> now we're going to flip it 180 degrees. So again, we have the surfaces that are moving flat against the surface. We put the jig in place push the bar up to exactly where it needs to be and we will place a corner bracket here. Need a couple more corner brackets around the top here, here, and here to really secure it in place. All right folks, that does it. We have assembled a Hypercube 300 frame. If you look over here, you'll notice that I did not put the corner brackets on the bottom. These three in each one of the corners around the perimeter of the frame do you know more than enough to, to keep it you know strong and we're actually going to be mounting some components underneath here uh, like the LCD enclosure and the ramp enclosure that sits right back here so we don't want to put them there uh, if we'll have to remove them at some point later if you want to put some more on there it's totally up to you but everything that's here is all that's necessary to produce a nice strong frame and now that I've got them all in place I'm going to tap all the corners and just like I had hoped with all of these in place holding all the pieces at 90 degrees the entire frame is completely flat and it's sitting on my granite countertop so there's no variations here this is nice and strong uh, stout and flat I hope this provided some good guidance for you guys if you have any questions please put them in the comments I'm really looking forward to uh, some plastic parts on this next so stay tuned and we'll start putting the plastic pieces on and setting up everything for the Z-axis in our next installment.